but the round of 32, we all remember how that went. Defeating MVP twice to advance on was a, a, a fantastic showing there for Showtime. So depending on how the brackets work out, we'll see if his PvP can match up against someone like Zocca. Um, and then from there on, once he gets onto the finals, depending on who he's going to play, if he plays uh, Hasuobs or Hero Marine, I think he would prefer playing the Terran, because uh, Hasuobs' PvP is usually something to be feared. But in general, throughout the Cups, throughout the five Cups that we had, these players, for the most part, have taken series off each other, one another, here and there, and pretty much everywhere. We have in Cup 1, for example, Sokka was able to defeat Hasuobs, uh, and he was able to defeat Hero Marine. Cup 2, let's see what we have here. He, uh, Hero Marine was defeated by Showtime in the finals. Um, and, you know, it, it keeps going like that. We have a lot of results uh, against these players. They play each other time in, time out. You see them always, always, always playing one another because the EPS scene is so well established. But now we just wait as so Soccer meditates or is making sure his keyboard's okay. Either one is, is also completely applicable. <laughs> Um, and it would it would actually be very very cool. I, there's there's two ways that this can go really. We can either actually there's three ways. We can either have in the grand final we could have New Blood versus New Blood. We could have Showtime versus Hero Marine, where I think Showtime would end up claiming his uh, first major title for him. Um, I think as it would be hard for Hero Marine to deal with uh, very very strong PVT from Showtime. We could have Old Blood versus Old Blood. We could have previous EPS champions playing one another in the form of Sokka and Hasuobs, who have a, a stellar rivalry at that uh, in terms of how many times they've played one another. They've played a lot in the EPS. They've played a lot in WCS Germany in the past. They've played each other all the way through Wings of Liberty in weekly cups uh, in still more EPS. And then we could have the third eventuality, which will be New Blood versus Old Blood. Um, as it would end up, we could have Hasu versus Showtime in the final, or we could have Mr. Hero Marine versus Zocca in the final. So there's a, a lot of a lot of possibilities here in the within these four players that could be very very cool indeed. But for now, we're just killing some time. And waiting to get into our first game here. As I am trying to join the game. Okay. So I apparently got an invite, but it didn't work. So I am going to re-log in a second. And hopefully we can get into this game. All right. I'm going to re-log. All right, hold tight, folks, whilst we get into series number one. Hopefully, this best of five will get on with it in just a little bit. As now I can join the game. Perfect. Perfecto. All right, so a little bit of a client error there, but we are into our first series. And error. Alrighty, so Belshire Vestige will be our first map. I wonder if they were waiting for me this whole time and I just had a client error so I couldn't get in. Either way, <laughs> it doesn't really matter as I'm in the lobby now waiting for these guys to get things going. So Sokke versus Showtime here for our first PvP. As these guys are just waiting for the first game. I hope guys, out there, guys and girls, are going to have a nice Christmas. I intend to head over to England eventually so that I can see my family after a long, long time of actually being away. It's been quite a while. But now, guys, countdown's begun for game number one here in our first series. Between Soccer and Showtime, it's about time. i got to say that I am looking forward to this. Uh, we had a few delays at the very beginning. Apologies for that. We had our FIFA tournament that did run over just a little bit. Uh, but now we have some StarCraft action on the way for you. A big thank you for joining me on the stream already. 
as we can now jump into game number one here for the semi-final as we have spawning down to the bottom right hand corner as our blue protoss he is esc showtime and up to the top left we have our red protoss he is atn zocca now the interesting thing about how we see zocca in terms of I, th I would say not only a national scene but on an international level as well is that for for a good portion of time during heart of the swan zocca just let's be frank hasn't done too much where has zocca been well zocca's been practicing Zocca's been training hard, and this recent EPS season, he's really shone. He really has. He, he finished top of his, the initial the initial cup stage in terms of points, uh, and then when it came to the bra the group stage, uh, finished second in his group, but still advances onto the semifinals. As you can see here, Showtime looking around, making sure that nothing too crazy is going on from Zocca, playing this best of five out very very diligently, very defensively. And a slightly slower gateway here than we're seeing from Zocker. That's in part because we saw Showtime scouting out for the potential of a proxy a little bit quicker than his opponent. But at the same time, Zocker did have that a little bit quicker as well. So his pro production is lining up nicely. And it doesn't cut it too much at all. But there is always the option here for Zocca to get do something aggressive. But with his double gas going down, I mean, it's very, very unlikely that we would see any kind of seven minutes call go down, you know, and then focusing heavily Chrono Boosted into that, especially considering that he's just been Chrono Boosting his Nexus. So a lot of his Chrono Boosts have been focused straight into that economy. He's not looking to go into anything super aggressive just yet. He's thrown down the pylon at the back as well here. Uh, where normally all that tech does end up getting hidden. But aside from that, nothing too too crazy on the way. Now we have Showtime here, a guy that's been trying to make a mark uh, in, this, in, in the international scene, as we did see him playing in WCS Europe uh, and was able to defeat MVP. Uh, some may say that, well, you know, that was uh, MVP was on, uh, on online uh, from Korea playing on Europe, but still... Showtime showed fantastic games regardless. Very, very strong double forge play against his opponent, MVP. Uh, but this is a whole other ball game. PVP, and he comes in and, ooh, interesting play. Very, very interesting. Started the Twilight Council, and then all of a sudden realizing that it was about to be scouted, canceled it. Now, the curious thing about all of this is that soccer, when going in there, Actually, he never saw the Twilight Council, and Showtime knows that he never saw the Twilight Council. There is two options there for Showtime. He could have either shown the Twilight Council, shoot away the probe, and then cancelled it to lure his opponent into a false sense of security. But now, Sokka has absolutely no clue what's going on in Showtime's base, while Showtime actually doesn't see the Twilight Council of Sokka either, as there were units around and about to try and push away this probe. So, mirrored, well, relatively mirrored openers here. Just a little delays in one or two things. Oh, aside from the Dark Shrine. Now, Sokka, he's actually going to go for a Dark Shrine as well. Well, all right, guys, this is PvP. That's what you happen sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> okay, big question. Who's going to throw down that robo? Who's going to play? Who's going to play defensively? Who is going to be the guy that sets themselves up uh, to not completely get caught off guard. And we already have Showtime throwing down that Robo. Now, will Zocker? Zocker does as well. <laughs> PvP. <laughs> oh, this is fun uh, from the very beginning. <laughs> pylon down here for Zocker. Pylon up here for Showtime. Once again, neither player has really seen the Twilight Council of their opponent, so they can't really predict that there's going to be a Dark Shrine, but they are obviously taking something like that into account. Very aggressive pylon here for Showtime. I think that part probe was trying to make an expansion, uh, as is the build-up here from Soccer. Showtime realized that and tried to block it off for just a second. Uh, and obviously, I mean, that probe could have never gotten in here to actually see what was going on, thanks to the fact that there is an abundance of stalkers. 
But now we do have Showtime going for the expansion. And Showtime knows that he's relatively safe with that expansion. I mean, yes, there's a few stalkers moving across the map here for Zocker, uh, but he would never have an observer over the other side of the map in due time since he, well, he doesn't exactly know that he would never have an observer over there in due time. But because of the build that we're seeing here, because it is so mirrored, um, he saw that there was a attempt at a Nexus here with the probe. And this Dark Templar is actually going to get in. That Observer really needs to come back very, very quickly. Photon Overcharge already killed off three workers. But at the same time, the Stalkers are pressing their advantage. He actually had to force field that off because he didn't have his Observer out over this other side. Uh, and this did get cleaned up. Five workers actually dead. Dark Templar will come along and try and help this out. Four Stalkers and a Dark Templar versus four Stalkers and a Sentry. Plus Mothership Core with Twilight uh, Time Warp. But in the end, Soccer would win out that battle. That Dark Templar with just one or two hits did provide a significant advantage in terms of DPS for a second at least until it died off. And now one extra one's going to be warped in to eventually shoo this away. Okay, bye-bye, Stalker. Your time was nigh. All right, so during all of that, 33 workers to 27 in favor of Showtime. Uh, Sokka, though, he's Chrono Boosting profusely across double Nexus. Very, very important after you've actually lost a few workers to your opponent's Dark Templar, uh, which in total, obviously, killing five workers off, did leave Showtime at a little bit of an advantage. Uh, and Sokka's going to press in again. I don't think he can do too much with this. Uh, although, the fact that he got a Photon Overcharge out of his opponent and got an Observer without losing anything was really, really good there by Sokka. He doesn't want to overextend. He doesn't want to lose too much. He's going to try and sneak a Dark Templar in. This is a clever, clever play considering the fact that he just sniped out that Observer. Very, very impressive here in game number one by Zocker. Despite taking uh, five probe losses early on, he will get the four and behind that, 38 to 35, thanks to him Corona boosting these next eye constantly. So cool play, but where do they go from here? That's the big question. Showtime right now, he's just Corona boosting out Immortals where he can, uh, which I do love, especially since one, one big, big key aspect to this is both players know that the other has Dark Templars. So as such, they have access to a Twilight Council. So what really stops so a player like Sokka from saying, hey, at this point in time, maybe Blink would be a good idea. <laughs> or Charge, to prove me completely wrong. <laughs> but Charge in turn is basically the, the direct counter to what I was saying. So Sokka is thinking on another level of how I'm thinking in terms of the flow of this game, at least. Uh, immortals are coming out. Z Zealots with charge are always a fantastic uh, choice when it comes to dealing with that. And I'm wondering now, actually, if he went in there with a Dark Templar and spotted that or whatever. Regardless of that fact, though, he knows generally that Immortals are going to be a pretty keen follow-up. Uh, and as such, Zealots, are, Zealots with charge are fantastic. I love Zealots with charge. Almost as much as Sean does, but not quite. All right. Well, Warp Prism did get spotted there for a second by Showtime, but did he see it is the big question. As uh, so there's going to be a Warp Prism heading out for Showtime. He's actually going to go for Immortal Harass, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the fact that he actually doesn't have Blink is going to hurt uh, Sokka a little bit in terms of defending against the Warp Prism initially. Uh, but then once he positions his Zealots, he should be right and dandy. And regardless of that DT warp in, that Zealot does end up getting the pylon. So, Warp Prisms pass one another in the night. And, well, three more gateways get thrown down. Soccer does have a, a upgrade advantage in terms of having his Forge out pretty early. And he got a few probes there once again in Showtime. So, nice harassment. That Hallucinated Phoenix coming in at the angle that it did uh, gave him a bit of forewarning as to whether or not there were going to be some units trying to attack this. Uh, but in the end, he decides to pull out those ones out there, at least warped in. Uh, and he also got really, really good visual confirmation as to what exact composition we're seeing out from Soccer. And the Dark Templar ends up dying off. Right now, nine workers killed to four still. 48 workers in total to 56 in favor of Showtime. But Soccer's... He's pulling no punches, man. He's just going straight for that third base. And if he gets that up, his economy is going to be great. He's also adding on Archons whilst actually not getting the Robo Bay. Yes, he never got the Robo Bay. 
So he's going to be playing an exclusively Immortal Zealot in Archon style while still getting harassed. There's not a whole lot you can do against that at this point in time unless he separates his units up properly. And Zealots, you know, just situated in odd locations are a great way to deal with that. But Sokka moving across the map. He's got a Stargate on the way and everything. It's This is just a show of muscle more than anything. I really don't see how Sokka could do any big, big uh, infliction of damage here. It'd be very difficult to really wiggle through. But at the same time, going for the third expansion. I guess he's trying to draw his opponent away from that front, uh, from the front of this third base with this army moving out, but he's actually going to throw up the Guardian Shield. He's actually going to go for this. Zealots dropped right next to that Colossus, messing around with some of the targeting. Those two Archons powering on forwards here with great Guardian Shield coverage by Sokka. No Guardian Shields at all for Showtime, and the Zealot Warping as well. All the while, Sokka's army has made it very, very difficult for the big, big meaty units there of Showtime to do much of anything. That was a awesome engagement there by Zokka. I <laughs> I'm actually quite flabbergasted as to how cool that was. But there you have it. That was a brilliant engagement. You've got to remember that going into that fight, Zokka's army was a little bit smaller than Showtime's. And he did have one Colossus, at least with range. Now, throwing up the Desperation Wall here is Showtime. Great pickup, utilization of that Warp Prism. Trying to hunt down that Colossus with the two Immortals. And once it finds its target, it's going to absolutely shred that Colossus to bits. Wow, Zokka, what a, what a well-controlled engagement. Truly, a very, very well-controlled engagement here in game number one. Another Colossus Falls. GG for the first game. Zokka shows that you shouldn't mess with the old boys when it comes to the new blood. Wow, that was, that was a really good engagement. Very, very well executed there by Zokka for game number one. Uh, and that means we are now going on to the four-player maps. As you can see here, Zokka on screen looking pretty calm and collected, got to say. Uh, Showtime's... <laughs> yeah, looking a bit flustered. I, I, can't, I can't agree more with that, as uh, that, was, that was a very well-executed decision there by Zokka. Showtime got caught in between his main and uh, sorry his natural and third base, which was never going to be the prime pristine position for him to engage because he didn't really have as many zealots uh, uh, or the mobility c in comparison to what we were seeing there from Zocker, who just executed perfectly. So now we are just going to get on to game number two in a second here. Frost will be our map as we wait for these guys to load up. A huge thanks for joining me on stream, guys. It's a pleasure to be able to bring you the EPS finals here from the German winter season, as it's these, these seasons, they're always a long road. They're always a long road in terms of the cups and then the group stage, uh, but then we get down to the final bracket uh, where fireworks really do happen, uh, especially since we did see some awesome play. I'm still, I'm still a little bit impressed there by Zocker. All right. But Showtime can bring it back. Showtime certainly can do. He showed uh, that he was able to execute himself uh, very, very well. Not only with the initial harassment of the Dark Templars, you know, a few units here or there. The fact that his opponent had also committed to Dark Templars as well meant that those few probe kills at the very beginning were very, very strong. But then we obviously saw Soccer recuperate those losses and double Chrono Boost into those next items get a strong economy himself, but the immortal harassment with the war prisms uh, also wasn't too terrible. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't do as much damage as Showtime would have loved to have done with it. Obviously, he would have loved to have gotten there, killed a few more probes, but in the end, it did a little bit. It got a pylon or two, it got a few probes or two, and uh, it was just split second, really crucial decision making and timing there by Zocker. Uh, that really caught Showtime out of position. So guys, in just a sec, we're going to go into game number two. We just went in for Maurice Lang, aka Mori, to get into the lobby. And then we'll jump onto Frost for game number two. Uh, but whilst I say that Showtime could equalize up the odds, if Soccer's going to just come along in PvP and take those kinds of engagements again, then that's a scary thing for Showtime to go up against. Um, that shouldn't have been as one-sided as it was. That should not... In, in terms of the army values and the army 
uh, and the army sizes, w they were around, what, 60 army supply for each player uh, going into that engagement. And then by the end of it, we saw 60 army supply for soccer against like 28 uh, for Showtime. So very, very meticulous control as we just wait for these guys to get into Frost. So, Zocker, if he was able to actually move on, he's one of the only multiple-time EPS champions uh, here in Germany, along with Hasuobs, of course. Uh, but Zocker is... I think he's certainly hungry for another one. 